we then traditionally marginalize the body? We, as you mentioned, we've not talked a lot about it. There's not been a lot of writings about it, but it seems as of the last few years, I've seen more books that are addressing this issue yeah. because they feel that it has been neglected. But why have we marginalized it so much? Well, I think part of the reason we neglected it was probably that there wasn't an urgent need to talk about it. Um, up until relatively recently, we we had enough overlap with our culture about our bodies that we didn't massively need to sort of rethink the theology of the body. Whereas now that we've we've kind of again gone into a cultural period where the body is seen as being entirely incidental to who we are, that actually forces us to to re-examine what we believe um, and not simply to to go with the flow on that. So um, some of these cultural shifts um, obviously have, have not been good or healthy, but they've they've been actually necessary for the church because it, it's made us have to look at things that we had previously assumed and, and not been attentive to. Which is why I find your book very fascinating. Um, you are very much pastoral when you write. You're not writing it as an academic. As you mentioned before, we had Truman on the show, and he has a, a tremendous heart, but he's a scholar. And, yeah, he's and got he, a brain the size of Jupiter. Yeah, he's 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 and he's an amazing scholar, fascinating mm. the insights that he comes up with. But I found that your book was much more sensitive to people that are in the midst of a struggle now. You are yeah. extending something to them. You're not condemnatory. Um, you're not pushing them away. You're not just putting them down or dismissing them. But you, as you said before, someone who is within the quote unquote movement or have been within the movement that that understanding because that's the 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 sin that you've had to deal with we and we all have those sins we like to talk about in our in our uh, ministry we talk about our our dent of disobedience we all have a disposition to something mm. yeah and everyone has has it it's just what's your dent you know and mm. it comes out in different ways uh, because i know that this issue has been very important to me having seen it firsthand in in family members and friends and uh, I lived in New England when gay marriage became legal. Mm. And I remember being actually at the Boston Commons steps that day when the final vote went through and it was a very hostile place. There were men, police officers on horseback. There was a large group of people supporting it and they were singing Bible songs, which was mm. the oddest, most surreal mm. thing to me. And people are driving down the street, giving them the thumbs up, honking their horns while looking over to where we were. And we were simply asking for the right to vote because the, it was taken away from the citizens. And people were giving us one way signs to heaven. Um, and it was very unpleasant. Um, you could just feel the tension in the air. So to see someone come at it, not shouting, because there were people even when we were there that were shouting that made you feel embarrassed to be a part of it because yeah. it was just people were responding with almost equal vitriol and it became much more tense with the police there and everything else. And seeing that though, really stuck in my mind because at the time I remember th thinking to myself, this is, could be quite our, our generation's faith alone in a way. Um, I mean, that's pretty extreme, but I, I knew 17, 18 years ago, that this was going to be a dividing line within the church. And it's, it's become that, but to see someone like yourself writing to address these issues and helping people along is, is quite refreshing. And, and, and you do address so many things you talk about gender dysphoria. So I want to talk about that just for, just for a moment, because some people just kind of dismiss it. A lot of Christians don't know what to do with it. Most mm -hmm. people that I know, they just want to put their head in the sand and hope it go away. But we know that it's a real thing. 